Morning everyone, welcome once again, Wednesday morning, middle of the week, Wednesday devotions, looking forward to sharing what the Lord has for us today. Hope and pray that your week's been going well and uh, that you are doing much for the Lord, doing much for the Lord and uh, what an exciting, what an exciting time we live in. I tell you, it's exciting to be a Christian in these days. Despite everything that's going on, it's exciting to be church planning. It's exciting to be serving the Lord. Tracy, good morning. And uh, I love it. I love it. All right, Carol, good morning. Let's go to uh, John chapter 4 this morning. John chapter 4. Be praying for you, Carol, as you have your uh, get-together with Jean tonight. Pray that your uh, Bible study goes well. John chapter 4. John chapter 4. Uh, let's begin in, uh, let's just, a couple of verses here. Brother Michael, good morning, good to see you this morning. Verse number five, then cometh he, this is Jesus, then cometh he to a city of Samaria, which is called Sychar, near to the parcel of ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Now Jacob's well was there. Jesus, therefore, being wearied with his journey, sat thus on the well, and it was about the sixth hour. Uh I want to talk to you this morning about th- this thought about wells, and, I, and I'll, I'll tell you the significance of them in the morning, but in a moment. But you know, Jesus comes to Samaria, and he comes to this specific place, this this place called Jacob's Well. And uh, when you think about uh, wells in the Bible, the Bible talks a lot about wells and and the importance and the, and the significance of them. And there's no doubt that they are significant, especially when you live in a dry, arid land like most of, uh, well, I wouldn't say that because, you know, Israel and, and, you know, the Middle East and all that, you know, they have their good seasons, obviously. And oftentimes when we think about desert places, we just think of dirt and dust, but that's not necessarily the case. There's no doubt in good seasons that a, a dry country looks really well, but wells, wells are necessary. Wells are necessary. And the Bible talks a lot about wells in the Bible, and especially this, this one here, the significance of Jacob's well, um, to to the Samaritans even, and how that Jesus sat on the well, and the story that 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 goes after it when Jesus shares with a Samaritan woman about living water, all right, living water. Um, but it's interesting when you think about wells, the, the significance of wells when you think about what they represent and what they mean. Uh, when you think about wells, they speak of life, obviously. You know, you can't have life without water. Um, I mean, you can go a little while without eating, obviously, but you can't go too long without drinking. So wells picture life, wells picture provision, blessing, prosperity. Uh, you know, wells was a, was a place where people met. Uh, they had different encounters together. And so the Bible talks about a lot about wells. Now, in Genesis 26, we see that Abraham had dug uh, three wells and the Philistines had filled them in. And Isaac re-dug those wells. Uh, you know, the first one was called Essek, which was strife, and then Sitna, which is hatred and anger, and how that strife uh, leads to, to anger and, and hatred. And, and then there was uh, Rehoboth, which was... Uh, uh, ma- making room, God had made room for them, and then he he uh, he sunk another well and called it Sheba there at Beersheba, where uh, it it was known as an oath. He made an oath before his before his God. So you've got all these wells and the significance of these wells uh, in the Bible times and the spiritual significance that they have for us. Now I want you to hold your hold your place here in John four. Go with me to um to Isaiah chapter twelve. Isaiah chapter twelve. And I'll, I'll, I'll share the, I guess, the main thought, the main point this morning that I want to share with you, because, you know, when you think about wells from a spiritual significance, a standpoint, we should all be digging wells, or we should all be re-digging wells. And, and of course, we can go off into different directions when it comes to that. But notice what uh, Isaiah says here in Isaiah chapter 12, verse 3, he says, Therefore, with joy shall ye draw water out of the wells, plural, of salvation. With joy you shall draw it. Now you know when you think about when you think about a well, you know you think about hard. Well, it's hard yak of digging a well. We don't you know, back in the day they didn't have the stuff that we have today, excavators and and all of that 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 we've got the modern technology and and so forth. They dug it by hand and it, it was hard work. And some of them were deeper than others. Jacob's well was very deep. It was a very deep well, sinking right down into the 
uh, the water drain down there, and, and of course it, it lasted for a long time. Um, you know, so it speaks about hard work, and, and you know, nothing of any great significance is not accomplished unless it's accomplished through hard work. And so you think about this, the wells of salvation, you shall draw water. So digging is hard work. Drawing water is hard work. You know what I mean? Especially when you've got to water your camels or your livestock. You know what I mean? They can't do it themselves. And so, you know, you'd have to lift up the bucket and pour it in and pour it in. And and if you know anything about camels, they can go a long time without drinking water. But when they need to drink, oh my goodness, they they will drink gallons and gallons and litres and litres of water just to, to sustain their, their need. So, you know, you think about drawing with joy, shall you draw water from the wells of salvation? Verse 4, and in that day shall you say, praise the Lord, call upon his name, declare his doings among the people, make mention that his name is exalted, sing unto the Lord, for he hath done excellent things. This is known in all the earth. Cry out and shout thou in heaven and of Zion, for great is the Holy One of Israel in the midst of thee. So, you know, you talk about drawing water from the wells of salvation, the many blessings that we have, if you please, in regards to our salvation and our Lord Jesus Christ. And you think about the greatest well that we have is right here is the Bible. It's the word of God. And so therefore, you know, you you draw water from that, the life, the the sustaining life from the word of God. Okay, so you've got this significance of the wells here. But, you know, back in in John chapter four, the thought that I got the other day, which really got me thinking was 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 this. You never know the lives touched. You never know the lives touched by the wells that you dig. You never know the lives touched by the wells that you dig. And I say that because you've got John chapter four now where this Jesus goes to Jacob's well. And of course, he knew he knew everything what was going on. We, you know, John four is an amazing chapter. But it was a place where obviously the Samaritans and in particular, this Samaritan woman came and and she would draw well from uh, water from this well. This well was sunk hundreds of years before. And so for hundreds of years, this well had touched the lives of many people. As a matter of fact, had touched the lives of many generations. Now, when you think about that from the spiritual aspect, you've got to stop and ask yourself the question, what kind of wells am I digging that will impact or touch a life or lives for many generations? Now, I I understand. I I get that where, you know, we often say we're in the last of the last days and, 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 you know, we, we, we don't know how long we've got left on this earth. But let me tell you something. It's not time to hang up the shovel, if you please, and the pick and the crowbar, right? (laughs) If you've ever had to use any of those things, you'd be quite happy to hang those things up. But this is not the time to stop digging worlds. This is not the time to stop digging something that will not just be a blessing to you, but will impact others. It will touch the lives of other people. I often, I, often we, we, I mentioned the Bible being a well. Jesus, obviously, the greatest of all wells, and this is what he was saying to the woman. He says, you drink of the water that I give unto you. You're never going to thirst again. You think about the well of Jesus Christ. How many lives has Jesus touched? How many generations of people has the Lord, and he's continuing to touch people even today through the well of eternal life, that water of eternal life. The Holy Spirit is known as a as a as a as a, as water. We draw waters from the out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water, right? So you never know the lives touched by the wells that you dig. You know, for grandparents, what 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 spiritual well are you digging to touch the lives of your grandchildren as parents, as as Christian people? I often think that the local church is a well. It's a place where people come and and they should receive life. They should receive blessing. They should receive, uh, you know, uh, provision. Where? From the local New Testament church. The local New Testament church is a well of water in a significantly dry and barren wilderness called the world. Now, think about that. Think about that. And then it blows me away to think, why don't Christians come more often to the well of water? 
You know, they come every now and again. Some come every... Now, I get some of you, I, I praise the Lord. You, when the doors are open, you're there. Praise the Lord for that. You know, they... But, but people, they're, oftentimes there are Christians who don't come as regularly as they should. I often wonder, what are you living on? Why don't you come to the well of the local New Testament church and draw water from that, you know? Again, drawing uh, with joy shall you draw water from the wells of salvation. Through salvation, through what Jesus did and through his organizing and starting his church, it is a place where we come and we draw water from the well. You know, when you think about that, when you think about all the... Now, think about this for a moment. I was thinking about how many... You talk about lives being touched, all right? You think about lives being touched. And I was thinking about this this morning. The well you dig today may mean an encounter or a divine appointment. A divine appointment. Obviously, this woman at Samaria had a divine appointment. She didn't know about it. Jesus did. But this woman at Samaria didn't know that this day in going to Jacob's well was going to be a divine appointment. For example, in Genesis 16, it was Hagar, right? In Genesis 16, Hagar was at the well, Abir Lahoroi was the name of the world, where she had an encounter. She had a divine appointment with God. Now, God knew what was going on. She didn't know. But this day, she had a divine appointment. And Beer Lahoroi, uh, is, it means this, uh, the, God, the God who is and sees, uh, sees me, seeth me. All right. So God sees. And, and this day, Hagar had a divine appointment with God. I think about Isaac. Again, at Beersheba, where the Lord appeared unto him. The Lord appeared unto him. If you go back to Genesis 26, the Lord appeared unto him at Beersheba and, that, and he sunk the well and called it Sheba. Right? So you've got Hagar having a divine appointment. You've got Isaac having a divine appointment. You've got the woman at Samaria having a divine appointment. What about Abraham's servant in Genesis, uh, in Genesis 24? where Abraham's dying and he sends his servant to find a wife for Isaac. And what happens? He comes to a well. And what's happening? Well, everyone's congregating there. The women are, are coming to draw water. And, and here's Abraham's servant at this well. And, and he sees Rachel. And, and this divine appointment takes place. So the wells that you dig in touching the lives of people, you never know that the wells that you dig, spiritually speaking, may lead to divine appointments down the road sometime. That's why as Christians, we need to be busy in digging these wells. You know, in, in, in making sure that, that we are leaving. Now, here is a thought. The well speaks of a legacy. You think about Jacob's well. It was a legacy. Go back up to verse number five for a minute. Look at what it says here. Then cometh he to the city of Samaria, which is called Sychar, near to the parcel of ground that Jacob... Right, gave to his son Joseph. Now Jacob's well was there. So, so Jacob gives to his son a legacy. Here's, here's this parcel of ground and here's the well that I've dug. And so Joseph, right, lived off of that well because it was, the par it was in the parcel of ground that Jacob, his father, the one who dug the well, gave to his son. See, father, son, parent, parents, listen, parents, grandparents, I can't stress this enough. What wells are you digging that you can give? What, what legacy are you laying? What legacy are you digging now to hand over to your children? What spiritual legacy are we leaving? It's important that we think about that. So Jacob's well speaks of a, of a legacy. So here is, here is the thought now. You talk about spiritual wells now that we're, that we're digging all right, that we're, we're working hard at. We've dug this one over here. We dug like Abraham. He dug not just one. There was three wells that he did, and, and then Jacob, he did the other, uh, yeah, he did the other one. Isaac did the other one, sorry, Abraham, Jacob, I didn't get them confused here. So there was four, but then the Philistines had filled in Abraham's, and then the son comes along and he redigs them, okay? Now, as you're laying along, what you don't want to, what you don't want to happen is you don't want, hey, brother Barney Bishop, good morning. You don't want the enemy to fill in the wells, but if they do fill them in, are you prepared to redig them? Are you prepared to redig them? See, what are we leaving for our children? What are we leaving? What, what we dig, the world that we dig, we don't know the lives that it's going to touch in years to come. Now, you may already know, perhaps when you first got saved, you started digging wells, spiritually speaking. 
And, and as you've dug that well, you, you've, you've gone on and, and, and as husbands, we get married and the well that we've dug spiritually affects our wives and children and so on and so forth. You know, Missionaries that go around starting churches and seeing people saved, they're spiritual wells that can touch the lives for, for generations to come. But the enemy wants to fill them in. The enemy doesn't want anyone to be blessed. The enemy does not want spiritual blessings and provision. The enemy does not want anyone to have a divine appointment with God, an encounter with God, the Lord Jesus Christ. And so what he does is he tries to fill them in. Are you prepared to redig when he fills them in? I hope you are. I hope you are. Just a bit of, bit of a short devotion this morning as I was thinking about Jacob's well and the lives touched by the well that he dug for generations to come. And I'm saying, brethren, this morning that we just don't know the lives that will be touched through the wells that we dig. Nikki, good morning. We've got to make sure that we're, we're digging good wells. You know, you, sometimes when, a, when someone would sink a well, when they dig it, they, they'd come across water that's not too good and then they would obviously fill it in. But we've got to make sure that we're digging wells of pure water, that we're digging wells that will, will, will touch the lives of our children, our grandchildren, our great grandchildren, if, if you know the Lord permits that we stay, you know, for any length of time. So what wells are we digging? And you've got to think about the fact that the wells that you're digging will touch lives, right, in generations to come. And it's important for us to think about. Jacob's well was there. Jacob's well was there. There was, there was a reason why Je Jesus went to Jacob's well. Now, I know, as I said before, he's, he's sharing with them about, I, I am, can give you, you know, eternal life, that water that I'm going to give you. Cameron, good morning. But brethren, you never know the lives touched by the wells that we dig. And we've got to, we've got to work hard, brethren, at digging wells that will touch the lives of God's people. Amen. All right, let's, uh, let's, have a, let's have a word of prayer. Father, we love you. We thank you for your goodness and blessing to us. Lord, we thank you for this thought this morning about you know, wells and, and digging wells and the lives touched for generations to come. And I pray, Lord, as Christians, that we would be mindful of what we're doing. What are we digging? Uh, are we re-digging wells? Are we, uh, are, we, are we laying foundations? Are we leaving legacies uh, for our children, our grandchildren? for those that we minister to. And I pray that today, Lord, that you'd lead us and guide us and bless us. And Father, we love you and pray that you would just use us today in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, God bless you. Hey, folks, while Cameron's on, be praying for him. He's song leading for us on Sunday. <laughs> I'm looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to that. Brother Michael, you're still the number one song leader, all right? You're still the number one song leader. He's filling in. We're just making sure that he's going to do a good job. <laughs> all right. Hey, everyone, have a, have a God-blessed day today. Look forward to being with you tomorrow morning. So until then, God bless you and goodbye for now.